Hi, I'm Yoram, and in this video, I'm going to cover the move transition in OBS. Move transition allows me to move myself in a very smooth way on the screen, just like you see here. In between different transitions, uh, di between different scenes, it's a much, much smoother transition than just cutting out or even fading between them. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install it, how to get it to operate, and I'm going to show you a few of the intricacies and some of the subtleties of uh, what you can do with the move transition. Stick with me. The first part is to find and install the move transition. Move transition is one of those transitions that actually is featured in the OBS website. The way I find any transition is just by typing or Googling OBS and whatever the name of the plugin is. It's not just a transition, any plugin. So I would write OBS move transition plugin and it would essentially get me to this page. What I can see in this page is exactly where I can download it and I'm going to click on download. In my case, I already downloaded and installed it. Fairly easy to install, uh, but there is going to be something that I'm going to show you that you should be doing. What I'm going to start with is actually create a whole new scene collection. So I'm going to go up on OBS to scene collection, click new, and we're going to call it the uh, OBS move video for now. So OBS move video, uh, there is no scene. Uh, there's just a default scene and we're just going to rename this scene, right click, rename, and we'll, go, we'll call it scene uh, let's just call it left scene because in this scene I'm going to put myself on the left. Uh, so we have the left scene. We're going to start adding parts to it. And the first part is going to be, uh, well, let's not forget uh, audio input. So let's put an audio input. We're going to call it Yeti. You will notice that I don't have anything predefined because this is a whole new scene collection. So Yeti. Uh, what are we choosing as a device? I'm going to choose my Yeti microphone. And now, as you can see, the Yeti microphone, maybe a little too loud, is included here. The next thing we're going to add is in, um, not an image. We're actually going to do a display capture. So I'm going to call it main display or let's call it laptop display. So uh, we're adding a new one. This is not the one I want to choose. I want to choose the other one. This one, this is my laptop display. I have three displays connected. This is why I had three different options to choose from. We're going to say OK. Uh, the last thing we're going to add is we're going to add the camera. And the camera is going to be video capture device. And we'll just call it the D3500 because that's the camera that I use. So uh, this actually is the one that came up. Uh, so I can just say OK and add this. And I'm going to put, since I call it left, I'm going to put myself on the left. I'm going to hold Alt while I crop my image a little to the left and we're going to move it all the way to the left and this should be how we have it right not exactly maybe we should put another filter on the camera uh, filter effects uh, add the one that's called chroma key i'm going to say yes and it already goes by the defaults and you can see that it eliminated the green screen so if i close it now you can see that all you see here is just me in that screen so this is going to be one scene. Let's add a second scene. In the second scene, I'm going to put myself on the right. So I'm going to call it right. There's nothing there, black. So I'm going to start adding things. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a Windows capture. I'm sorry, a display capture. Uh, this time I'm choosing existing laptop. There's our display. I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to add the input. Uh, the audio input, so we already have Yeti defined, so we just added Yeti. And then the last thing I'm going to add is I'm going to add the video capture. We already have D3500. Note that when I bring this up, it actually comes up with the filter already installed. And this is something I'll talk about in another video. How can you treat the camera differently in different scenes. So for now, we're just going to take it as is. So we have the camera. Once again, I'm going to hold Alt and uh, or maybe not hold, I'll just move myself to the right of the screen. 
Okay, now we have two different uh, two different scenes, and as I click through them, you can see that the uh, filter that's being used or the, the transition that's being used is fade. And you can see that the fade is here at 300 because I did not add move yet as a transition. One thing that I do want you to notice is that I have now, since I added the camera, I have two lines for audio and you can see that audio is actually coming through both of them so just be careful because this means that OBS will output two audios and what I just do is since I do use the Yeti as the main one I'm just going to shut down the other one okay so uh, the next part is you can see that if I moved uh, I moved myself uh, between the different scenes it was simply using fade because fade is the transition that's currently being uh, defined. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the move transition. So I'm clicking on it. What am I going to call it? I'm going to call it move. Actually, just call it move uh, should be enough. When I click on that, uh, first of all, move is coming in here and it's giving me all of the parameters. I'm not going to touch on any of the parameters or properties right now. I'm just going to say yes. And the reason is I'm, I'm going to get into that uh, in, in a few minutes, a few seconds. If I switch now, you can see that what happens is actually that I only move. I would even add yet another one. And another one would be, uh, let's call it bottom right corner. I can put spaces, don't have to. And in the bottom right uh, corner, Let's add things. Uh, we're going to add the display again. Which one? We're going to take the laptop one and we're going to add the camera, the video capture device. Uh, we're going to first click on add existing, then say yes. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put myself really tiny in the bottom right corner. And actually, I'm going to even move myself almost all the way to the corner. OK, let's see what happens now if I click on it, because move is already the selected transition. Uh, left, right, small corner, right, left. Now it is time to actually talk a little more about the uh, effect and the properties of the move effect. So you've seen how it works. And uh, now what we'll do is we'll just, since we have move selected here, we will click on this cogwheel uh, for transition properties. And we're going to open this up to properties. And now I want to take you a little through the properties uh, themselves because uh, things are handled a little differently and have more features uh, that I can use. All of these all of these are explained in the website uh, where you downloaded it. So uh, if I, I'll start from the beginning, match. There are three types of objects in the move property or, or that the move property will apply to. Ones that are matched, this is how you define them. Ones that are appearing and ones that are disappearing. That's it. That's that's at the end. That's the end of the uh, specifications, the, the uh, uh, properties. So the ones that are matched, that means that that property or not property, that source exists in both scenes. So when I go between the two scenes here, left and the right, there are two sources. I mean, forget the microphone for a second. There are two visual sources let me move this a little to the right. There are two visual sources. One is the camera and the other is the screen. Both of them exist in both. You know what? I can even take the bottom right corner and go to the laptop screen and make it a little smaller. And you will see that even that is, is a smooth move between the two of them, the, the two scenes. They're not fading or cutting into uh, each other. So that means that both are matched. The, the source here that's called uh, D3500 is the same source here and the same source here. So this is how we deal with matched items. The next part is appearing items. So how will we deal with an appearing item? So let's say that in the bottom right corner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add something. I'm going to add, let's say, an image. 
and that image is going to be logo and I'm going to look for logo somewhere let's see where would I find logos well how about if I go to some of my own logos and I'm going to take this logo as an example so I'm taking this logo uh, and I decided that this logo is going to be actually we're going to put it in the top right corner so make it a little smaller now this logo only appears in bottom right corner it does not appear here and you will notice that when I go from right to bottom right corner that logo appears if I go from bottom right to right that logo disappears or the same if I go from here to left the logo disappears and you will notice that something happened to it let's see how it appears when I go from left to bottom right it appears from somewhere if I went here it looked like it disappeared towards the middle here okay let's look back at the move properties and if I bring the properties up here's what I'm going to see first of all what does match really mean the default would be that it contains the other source name so it's the the new source name contains the other source name you'll notice that none of them is checked because it really looks for a complete match between the two different ones uh, I can remove the numbers at the end so uh, let's say that one is called camera one the other is called camera two and it removes the numbers from the end it would still treat them as a matched object even though one is cam camera one and one is camera two with the last word removed so if I call it camera left and camera right if I check this button it would eliminate it, it would treat them as matched subjects even though they are actually uh, different ones uh, but it would treat them as matched. nothing is checked here so it's really looking for exactly the same one when is the switching point so 50 percent halfway through is pretty much kind of the standard what would happen to matched items will they be eased in and out will they be eased as cubic or let's say let's see what other options different options they can move in and out in a uh, quadratic way in a sine way in a circle way in an exponential elastic bounce so there are properties for matched items max only how do we transition the scale type what is the curve when applicable I'm not going to go through all of those it's just something that uh, you can play with and I want you to know where it is uh, you will notice that when something appears we're using zoom from the center left when something disappears we're using zoom so this time it's zoom out to the center right so you have noticed that since the logo is was appearing here in the top that it appeared from here from center left if we wanted to appear from anywhere else we would go into the move properties and for appearing we're going to say exactly where we want you to come from you can see it can come from a lot of places and uh, frankly we can probably say that uh, maybe none and I wonder what none would look like uh, if we say if we said none then when it appears you know it just appeared in place so it was still zoom but it appeared in place these are the different parameters for the move transition uh, and the move transition is a nice one it makes things look a little more professional a little more smooth I recorded this video for you based on what currently exists and what I know right now but things change new technology new products new software versions new ideas that I get some of them from viewers like you so if you want to be informed when I release new videos with new or updated content subscribe to this channel and get notified when I release them oh and you can also like this video but that's a whole different thing if this video was helpful to you subscribe to my channel and get notified when I release more videos like this also check out my resources for speakers at thediyspeaker.com